Good evening. So I'd like to take you back on this homily to a day back in September, September 2nd, 2004. My wife was nine months pregnant with our oldest child, and she was a few days past her due date, and I was out doing something, and she called me in the morning and said, I think I'm having contractions, and I think you should probably come home because we need to get to the hospital. So all these months of excitement, right? All this buildup over all these months, and here it is, right? I'm trying not to crash on the way home to go pick her up. We have our go bag. We're ready to go to the hospital. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun, at least for me. I don't know about her. <laughs> we get to the hospital. They rush us right in. We see the doctor. We see the nurses. Everything's fantastic. Call mom and dad. Let the grandparents know what's going on. And now it's just a waiting game. Before long, I start to hear a little chatter going on amongst the nurses. I start to hear the machines starting to beep a little bit. And before I know it, the medical staff is in complete uh, emergency mode. And it's the emergency is in our room. Apparently, the umbilical cord had been wrapped around my son's throat, neck, in the womb, and his heart rate had begun to drop. I didn't know what was going on. It was one of those surreal moments where you don't feel like you're actually involved in this. It's almost like you're watching TV, like you're just a bystander watching everything go on. I felt completely helpless. Of now, I, I wouldn't say, of course, there's a happy ending, but there was a happy ending. My son was born, and I think he's healthy to this day. But um, everything wound up turning out. We surprised the grandparents. Uh, they were expecting us to call them later on with the good news, and it wound up being an emergency C-section, and my son was born within the hour. So it was kind of exciting still. So we still tell this story to this day. But I tell this to you because I have, have gone through such a... a, a a period of total panic and helplessness and just feeling alone. Seeing my wife uh, go through this and not knowing what's going to happen to my son. So I'd like to fast forward a little bit, and I've shared some of this experience with you in, in a, a few previous homilies where I'd shared that my mom had passed away from cancer several years ago. And at this point, when I was dealing with that trouble in life, I had really come back to the church and my faith had been restored and I was practicing my faith. I was in uh, the seminary uh, in the formation program to become a deacon. And her decline really accelerated over the last few months. And when she passed, I have to say that um, although it was hard, and I, you know, we cried and we grieved and we mourned about it, I had this inner sense of calm and peace that Somehow, this was all going to be all right in the end. I don't know how else to explain it. But the reason I tell you these two different stories, these two different experiences for me, is because when I look back, I, I really see where I was in relation to God. And in that first situation, I really hadn't been practicing my faith. I hadn't been coming to church. I hadn't been praying and then all of a sudden I'm in this emergency and I'm finding myself kind of lost out there. And it was a totally different situation the second time around. You see, when we talk about hope, we're not talking about who you hope is going to win the Super Bowl tomorrow, right? That's not what St. Paul is talking about in this second reading today. He's talking about our Christian hope, the theological virtue that we all share as Christians in the hope of the resurrection the hope of eternal life. Now, the one thing that really jumps out at me from these readings today, which I really think is fantastic, is these two verses from that first reading of the prophet Jeremiah. Blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the one whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted near the streams, and his roots will reach out to the water. And when the heat comes, he won't wither. 
in the year of the drought, he still will bear fruit. It's true. Yes, we're like trees. We're living things. We need water. But H2O is not going to cure that spiritual thirst that we have. Picture that water in that beautiful two verses there. The water for us is really the church. That's that spiritual nourishment that we can find. Is when we come to church. We come together for liturgy. We come together for prayer. We break open the Word. We listen to the Scriptures. We're nourished through that. Our spirits are nourished. The tree that reaches out its roots to the water. Right? We know that those roots are going to seek out that water to feed that tree. So the roots really represent for us what our desires are. Right? What are our desires? What are our actions? What do we do to put that desire into motion? Are we seeking water? Are we seeking that life-giving sustainment? Or are we seeking something that's not so good? And then we get, of course, to the heat and the long periods of drought without the water. We know that that stresses a tree, right? We know that that's going to stress the tree out. And if it doesn't have that established root system that can pull that water in, it's going to wither. We all go through these times in life, right? We all go through these times of heat. We all go through these times of drought, some worse than others. Whether it's a loved one that gets sick, a loved one who dies, getting bullied, harassed, getting fired, name it. Right? We're all going to go through this in life, but God does not promise us that through this life we're not going to have any hardships. We're not going to have any challenges. But what he does say is that if you turn to me, I will be there with you. The one who suffered first, we have this opportunity to join closer to him in our own suffering. And so, for those of us here tonight that may be going through one of those times, I would just ask you to really focus and reflect on that one little snippet there that we got from the Gospel tonight from Jesus. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. God bless you.